there's just so many weird like biases and misunderstandings about puppetry from the get-go. It's, uh, it's Muppets or it's marionettes, um, and it is those things, but it's also oodles more. We create puppet art that celebrates the weird things that make us unique and the weirder things that bring us together. In a lot of ways, like theater as an institution doesn't seem super interested in, in the stuff that we are bringing to the table. The format of the way the art gets made and the content of what the work is are totally inextricable from each other. In order to be creating the processes we want to create and creating the type of art that we want to be making, it like kind of has to be separate from the in Chicago theater industry. There is this idea that I find really central to what Rough House does, which is that like the community is not just the artists and it's not just the audience. It's like the, the kind of fluid back and forth between artists and audience. We all know this is completely made up and like and that is what's magic about it is that like we're doing this thing together. One of the things I'm excited about is that we are shedding the trappings of being a, a theater company. I think the art that comes from the, the sort of emergent coalescence of a bunch of different minds, it just is richer and it is more interesting and it is more fulfilling to participate in and I think it is more meaningful to be an audience to than something that has sort of come from this auteur vision. <laughs> We can bring the community together, we can put artists in conversation with each other, and like we as an institution can be providing resources and platform to let more voices be shown more. So the, the haunted house that we've been working on um, has started to become a lot more collaborative than it began. It's a lot more of people bringing their own styles to the table uh, and us having sort of like a collective conversation about sort of like what are our shared fears and then Rough House being able to sort of like make a, a home and a space for people to be able to express that. is this conduit for people to connect with each other and for people to connect with the community more broadly. You don't have to consider yourself to be an artist to make art. In fact, like I think that probably the vast majority of the best art that is being created is from stuff who don't have formal training. And our job right now is to really put out as much strange stuff as we possibly can and help others put out as much strange stuff as they possibly can in hopes that more people will see it and more people will get involved. My name is Charlie, I'm 29, and I like to call myself an artist. Me coming out and me taking art classes both happened junior year of high school. It was just something that I felt I needed to do in terms of just expression. And I got to be really comfortable with delving into my identity and what I wanted to express. And it was just a good year of becoming more comfortable in my own skin. That just means being authentic and just staying true to the most important parts of my identity, especially the ones that I've been trying to kind of quash since I was little. That was a really powerful moment. I still think about that because I remember growing up, I had all this fear that I had built up 
it was really empowering to move to Chicago and just see gay couples everywhere. Whereas um, I'd grown up in the Philippines, then Memphis, Tennessee, and then Mississippi State for college, where none of that was really that open or that accepted. After coming out, I didn't realize just how much of a weight not being open was. Just one of those things you don't realize until the burden's no longer there. And I wanted to translate that feeling of power that I felt in my art. One of the big pieces I'm working on right now is a self-portrait that kind of deals with anxiety. This piece has three versions of me. To me, it represents thinking, overthinking, and rethinking, and then through all that, just finding myself back to where I started. I want to be vulnerable in so many ways, like mentally and physically in my art. And I'm really trying to delve into more of that and trying to find how my intentions can be communicated in a more precise way, but still creating a good piece of art. I think it just goes to the very core of human beings that just want to express themselves, say, this is who I am, this is how I feel. You don't have to understand it, but I just want to express myself. I think if I'm honest about my humanity and who I am, it doesn't matter if people agree. I think that they will absolutely just see the humanity in it and kind of relate somehow. If I just show kind of the core of my person, then I think that will translate. When I say press, you say Harris. Press. Press. My name is Press Harris, and I'm a hip hop artist from Chicago. Black and I'm free. This is what they say. Is it really what they mean? I'm just doing me. So I do consider rap an art form. I think it's one of the most powerful art forms of our generation. When you think about the impact it can have on people's lives, when you think about the influence and magnitude of, of the role it plays in culture, it's absolutely an art form. Just to split it with your mans, now I'm gonna flip it, then go flip it with the fam. I ain't leaving it. So art has connected me throughout my journey because I'm big on community. I'm big on collaboration. I'm big on positive messages and having an impact. And it felt like for me, art was one, the way that I could express it best. So, you know, I think about different ways of painting or writing a book or other art forms that people can do. For me, writing and, and music was a way that I could express it best. And I think it's one of the most powerful ways to express certain messages and be able to unite people. I think people have different levels of artistry with it. There's people that are very intentional about entire projects and visuals that go with the music. At the end of the day, it's about making people feel something. And so I think when you make people feel something, it's an art form. Look, I made a promise to mama that we see brighter days. And I'ma light the way. Artists talk a lot about like a flow state where you like forget about everything and you just focus on what you're working on. And I, I really get that when we're on stage, zero in on something and don't think about anything else in the world. Performing is the part that I connect most strongly with. It's like meditative kind of, where you don't think about anything else, nothing else matters at that moment except for the moment. I've never really considered myself a musician. I've always considered myself an artist. I lean toward more film, but um, I just kind of fell into bass playing. I've played guitar for a while. And then I quit after high school um, and I was rooming with a fellow musician. So they asked me if I could try and I said, sure, why not? Um, so I started in that band with them and that it uh, kind of gave me some more confidence to continue playing bass. It's a powerful a feeling because it's one of the most important parts and it's one of the most like angry, it's like an angry instrument. I'm 
super inspired by Sonic Youth. I'm also inspired by Nirvana. I grew up in Seattle, so the grunge scene is super important to me. <laughs> I think the thing about Nirvana and Sonic Youth that I really like is just their like energy and how they conduct themselves on stage that is both non-performative and performative at the same time. And I, I do really like performing and I think that's what like is the creative outlet for being in a band is that it's like a weird state of being to just like be on a stage and people are looking at you and you know that and you just have to remember that you're with these people on the stage and you're just there to play music. It is a privilege to be an artist and that's something that I'm incredibly grateful for. I see myself as a ceremonial artist where I'm creating experiences of ceremony that invite us into sacred belonging. The vision for the House of Kapwa actually came to me in the six week residency that I had, an artist residency where I focused on rest. And in that time, this vision of this loom that surrounds me came to me as I was resting. And it was, it had an opening in the middle that invited me to think about how when I rest, I'm in connection with the ancestors. And all around me are these weavings of plant material that was symbolizing that I was protected and supported in my rest practice. I was invited to be a liturgical artist in residence at First Presbyterian Church because I was interested in the question of how we can bring more embodiment into church liturgy and then place them on the ground. There's so many different ways that we can connect with the divine and for me, particularly, it's about connecting with my body. It's through dance, it's through rest, it's through song. Because my work really centers care, I wanted the process to embody that too, and not just the outcome. So even the process of recording this sound bath, I wanted that to be a care-filled experience for the musicians. Growing up, I was a dancer and I was a performer, and I started with Filipino folk dance. Uh, I was in a dance troupe with my cousins, so it was a family touring dance company. Art has been a thread throughout my life, but it really only came into the front in 2020 when I quit my job as a learning designer and I decided to pursue being an artist full time. The threads that connect us, may they stay connected even as we depart from one another. I'm allowing myself to move in between worlds of ministry, worlds of spirituality, worlds of design and art. For me, it's about creating the worlds that I want to live in and inviting people to that altar so they can be a part of it too. For me, music is like knowing different languages by knowing different genres and that's kind of like how I connect to other people that like love those genres as well. 
And as a DJ, it's fun because like mixing songs together is like putting sentences together. I'm Rainy, I'm a DJ. I'm Rainy, I'm a nurse. Yeah, it's like if I were to split my body into two, it'd be like science and music. I love doing both things. There's just like, with nursing, it kind of like reaches into like the science aspect of like my life and like what I've grown up around. Um, both my parents are nurses, so like I've just like been raised with that culture. And then with music, it's just like the creative side and what I'm able to express that's not at all science related. Nursing is definitely something I want to do as long as I can. Like there's just a feeling that I get at work and like being part of surgery and like being able to like teach people like the things that I've learned through the years um, and share that experience that I don't get through DJing. Um, but I, I do eventually like want to like, you know, chill on the nursing, maybe get go part time or maybe just like taking a break from it just so I can focus more on music. Because again, like that's also like the other side of me and such like an integral part of me that like I want to grow on that too as much as I have with nursing. I want to make sure that like I'm being fulfilled like as a whole person um, that every part of me is just like being satisfied. Um, yeah and it's been through doing nursing and DJing. I've always felt like I've had like a hard time Speaking to people, I get really awkward sometimes if I'm not comfortable with people. And DJing has just been like my best form of communication with other people and like just an audience in general. I just feel more connected to other people, especially when I see people react the same way I react when I listen to a song. Um, it's like very validating. It's like maybe I'm doing something right and like, it, like I don't need to use my words to express the way I'm feeling. I would describe my art in one or two words, wild. Me, it's just me. <laughs> I'm noon. Not very good at communicating with others, even though I want to, but showing somebody in art is kind of like a conversation starter. And it's easier to, easier to make friends. The moment I realized that um, I may have had schizophrenia, or better yet, that I, I realized that something was different. Um, I kept getting these uh, false beliefs that I was um, ill or sick in some way and I kept going and pursuing these ailments one day I thought maybe it's just me maybe it's my brain that's you know having an issue and not my body and that's when I figured it out that I had schizophrenia the best way I can explain it is you want to do something so bad or you want something so bad but there is just this brick wall in front of you telling you no and you can hear it yelling no 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 you can't do that you know you're gonna fail um, and you have to fight every day to prove those voices wrong or else you might fail what attracted me to art in the first place was being able to see something um, more beautiful than my reality I started drawing as early as I could remember, but I would make mistakes in my drawing and I would get really irritated and want to throw it out. But I remember making a promise to myself that I would push through and just, you know, add something, cover it up. I'm really influenced by biology, microscopic photography, cells, bacteria, germs. There are also things that I'm quite terrified of, which is why I really like to draw them and see them in a setting I can control. This piece just hits, it hits the eye right. I was inspired by cells of bacteria under a microscope. So I added these little creatures in here and they're swimming, they're chilling. 
A typical day for me is filled with art. I like to sit in my art room, have a coffee, think about what I want to do. It's an all-day thing. Sometimes I'm in that room for nine hours. <laughs> Drawing. Art disconnects me from my condition in a good way. When I do art, sometimes I forget about my issues. I can focus on something colorful and pretty. Art has helped me heal um, from a lot of things. Mental illness, the world brings me a lot of happiness. <laughs>